I've been using this Creality K1 so much since I got it a few weeks ago, and I saw on the internet some people are starting to receive their first units, and I have a few tips to help you out to get better results faster. Since I've been using it, my results now are way better than the ones I was getting during that first initial review, so let me break it down. Here's five tips. The first thing you should change is in the slicer, and it's really the first thing you should change is turn off the arc configure enable setting. Arc moves inside of a 3D printer are really cool and this next big thing that I think we'll get in 3D printers, but currently in this one it wasn't enabled correctly and a lot of my first benchies was get, were getting a few little oddities and issues coming out of it. I found that some models slice correctly using arcs and some of them are less nice. So if you are having little issues or little artifacts showing up in weird ways, turn off that and you will get way better results. Here's one of the first vases I printed out. It's really big and it's got all these artifacting issues showing up in it. Then I re-sliced it without arcs and this one is looking way better. It's not a perfect print. It is still a shiny silk filament, so there, it's not a perfect print but it is way better than I was getting before with Arc Enabled. The second tip is for getting TPU prints working. In my initial review, I wasn't able to get TPU working. Since then, I've ordered a new spool and it's working great. These TPU prints look amazing in my initial testing here. And there's a few quick tricks you should do. First off, up the temperature. The default profile is a little too cool for the TPU I'm using. Bump that up to about 250 and I was getting better results out of it. The second tip is to slow your speeds down. Depending on which TPU you're using, it will determine on which speeds it can really handle. This one I'm using here from Overture, it could go at around 50 millimeters per second and got great results out of it. Maybe I could go a little bit faster if I worked with temperature. There's a lot of tuning that goes into every TPU profile you're making. But for this one, I got great results at 50 millimeters per second. The third tip is that the filament removal routine in here is way more automated than I initially thought it was. To remove filament, all you need to do is press retract. It heats up the nozzle, extrudes some, and then will retract it out of the gears. That's all you need to do. Don't step in and try to mess with things. That just throws it off. Then unlock the gears on the top, press your new filament all the way into the gears, then lock it back down again, and then press the extrude button. That will automatically heat it up again and extrude the filament out. The first few days with this, I kept trying to over interfere and over pushing filament in manually and all these things. Just let it automatically do it and it turns out a lot better for me. The fourth tip is the bed's glue stick. It looks damaged, but it's really not. This is just the glue stick layer on there being removed. Every time you remove a print, you're pulling off a bit of the glue stick, so it's gonna show up on there. So every now and then you will need to wash this off because the first layer you're printing onto is a little bit different. And in some super thin prints like this dragon wing, you can see the height differences where there was glue stick or wasn't glue stick. So with a bed like this, it will need some maintenance. If you're using it a lot, clean it off every now and then, put a fresh layer down. If you just keep putting glue stick on there, you'll build up a thicker and thicker layer on there and it is just a huge mess. It does take a little bit more maintenance to use a bed like this because you do need to wash it off every now and then and then reapply it. It's not like a PEI bed where you just wipe it down with some IPA and then you're good to go. The fifth tip is to keep updating the firmware. They keep updating and changing this printer because it's brand new and it's vastly different than anything else Creality has made before. Since I received the printer, there's been seven firmware updates. They're constantly tweaking and working and making things better since it is a brand new printer and the firmware updates are so easy. I mean, this was an early engineering sample for me so that makes sense why there are so many and they should be less in the future, but it is really cool that they keep updating and working on this printer and firmware updates will make this a better printer in the future. So keep an eye on that tab and update it every now and then if it needs it. One more bonus tip inside of the slicer under the devices tab, you can select details next to your printer and it opens a page similar to a clipper web page and you can manage the internal memory and storage on your slicer. That makes it really easy to go in there and remove older prints you've done instead of having to do it all on the touch screen right here. And you guys want one more tip? Subscribe to this channel. There's so many fun things that I'm printing on this channel and I keep learning more about this printer. So I'm sure I will do an update in the future as I learn more about this printer and how to get even better results out of it. Also, if you have a Creality K1 and you have another tip that I didn't mention in this video, put it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if there's any more questions that I didn't cover in this video or my previous review video, be sure to put them in the comments. I'd love to help you out. But as always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.